Hey, what is up guys, your boy Izokage here with part 3 of what if Deku had a shape-shifting quirk. Let's begin. For recap, you guys can go check out part 2. During the two weeks before they received their results, Katsumi and Deku have been doing their training together at Dekuba Beach. When Deku received his results in the mail, he opened it and out came a small disc that projected an image of Principal Nezu, explaining his written scores in more detail. After this, he informed him that he had received a scholarship, which has never happened since All Might left UA. The scholarship also covers all school supplies, hero gear, and gave him access to special areas of the school. After Nezu finished, All Might appeared from the projector and explained to Deku that he's tied for first with Katsumi and he remarked, You two are always neck and neck. All Might then finished his presentation by saying, Come young Midoriya. Welcome to your hero academia. Midoriya was excited and told his mom the good news before calling Katsumi. She told him she also received the same scholarship and they talked for another hour. The next day they went to school sporting their red bracelet signifying their scholarship. They walked into class and as they opened the door they heard Ida lecture in Bakugo to get his foot off the desk and he's disrespecting his predecessors. When they walked in, everyone went silent, then Ida spoke up. Hi, my name is Tanya Ida. You are obviously a superior student than I. Not only did you beat All Might's score on the practical exams, but you also got hero points which no one knew existed. I can see how you got full marks on the exams. Deku stared at Ida in confusion until a girl with short hair touched him, touched him on the shoulder. Baraka thanked Deku and Katsumi for saving her from the zero pointer. They said it was no problem and what any aspiring hero would have done. With all this talking, it woke up Aizawa and he said, If you guys are here to make friends, then leave. And since you want to be so noisy, we're going to have a quirk apprehension test where I'll see the full extent of your quirk. And the person in last place will get expelled. Deku was the first one out of the room with Katsumi at his side heading to the changing room. In the changing room, the boys saw all the scars and burn marks on Deku's body. Kirishima walked up to him and said, Hey yo, you good bro? How did he get all these? Deku pointed at Bakugo and said, Maybe ask him. Bakugo got angry and used his explosions to blow up his locker door. Then everyone saw the outline of a hand that matched the one in the center of Deku's chest. Because of this, everyone was pretty scared of Bakugo and didn't really want to talk to him. Outside, Aizawa called up Katsumi to throw the ball since she displayed the most raw firepower in the practical exams. She let out half her strength and threw the ball, but it only went 5 meters. She was confused and looked over at Aizawa and saw his, float his glowing eyes and scar floating. So, erase her head. Why did you take my quirk? Why aren't you using your full power? Oh, that's it? Okay getting a grin on her face. She grabbed the ball and threw it up and as it fell back down, she aimed her hands at it and let out her special move but went plus ultra. Releasing blue flames in the explosion, sending the ball a cool 10,000 meters. After this, they did other exercises with Deku and Katsumi coming at the top of their class but the ball throw would decide who would come first. Since Katsumi already went, it was Deku's turn. And another part of his ability is since he's the host of multiple predatory animals, he's like the ultimate apex predator and he has some control over other animals. The smaller their brain, the more control he has over them. He called a bird and hands it the ball and it flew away and since the bird can fly for hours and rest and keep going, he got infinity. It was a bit of a cheap way. but was kind of big brain and because of Mineta's lackluster performance he got expelled. He was crying all the way through the gates never to be seen again. The next day after their math class the class was bored and everyone thought why they were doing regular school stuff at a renowned hero school. Then All Might came bursting in saying I am here. Everyone in the class was excited to see All Might except Todoroki, Katsumi, Bakugo and Deku. All Might then explained that they will be doing something called the Hero vs Villains test. 
and a random selection of students were chosen in pairs and one pair would go against another as the heroes trying to recover a bomb on the top floor of a villain's building while the villains would try to protect the bomb before the time ran out or capture the villains or capture the heroes. Deku and Katsumi were put on a team together against Todoroki and Bakugo. Deku came up with a plan. He would have Katsumi use her explosion feet and fly up to the top floor of the building and look for the bomb from there while he would stall Bakugo who he knew would come rushing straight at him. They proceeded to else execute the plan and as soon as Izuka reached the second floor like just on cue, he heard an explosion and Bakugo came bursting through the walls. When he saw Deku, he just got tunnel vision and ran straight towards him, using his explosions to boost him a little. He would then start throwing a flurry of explos explosive palm strikes at Deku, who wouldn't even move, and just harden his skin, using the same material in sea snail shells, which are apparently the stronger shells. Bakugo sees that Deku wasn't even trying, would back off and then unpin both his gauntlets. Before he let the explosions off, All Might screamed, Young Bakugo, stop! You might kill him! But it was too late. He let off the explosion, screaming, Die, Deku! And all the walls behind him blew up, leaving a pile of rubble. Izuku was still standing, which shot Bakugo and all the other spectators in the match but he wasn't unscathed. Both his arms came flying off with the explosions. Everyone was horrified. Some people looked away as they couldn't bear to see the sight. And before All Might could stop the match, Deku used Sea Star and Axolotl DNA to regrow both his arms. Then he shapeshifted into an ox, moving at top speed, ramming into Bakugo, sending him flying through two walls, knocking him out. Deku wrapped him up in his capture tape and before he could start heading to the bomb, he heard, Hero Team Win. During his fight with Bakugo, Katsumi had been using the heat from her explosions to melt Todoroki's ice, sealing the door shut. And as she opened the door, a small glacier of ice spikes came rushing at her. She stood her ground though and exploded it, and using the smoke as a distraction, she ran into the move and used one of her moves, Solar Flare, which amplified the light emitted from the explosions to temporarily blind Todoroki, and quickly ran to the bomb and touched it. When they returned to the observation room, they started to examine the fight between the fight, and Katsumi got praise for her quick subduing of Todoroki. Deku also got praise, but also Momo hinted at the fact that he prolonged the fight too long, causing him his harms. Speaking of his arms, after his visit to the nurse's office, Bakugo was sent to the principal with a copy of the fight. After a close reviewing, they found that Bakugo was fighting with the intent to kill and suspended him for a month to rethink his actions. A week went by with no issue and Aizawa announced that they will be going to the USJ Unforeseen Simulation Joint to train their rescue skills in different environments. After the election of the class presidents who were Deku and Katsumi because they were the strongest, they boarded a bus headed towards the USJ. The whole ride there, Katsumi had been sleeping and put her head in Deku's lap, which caused everyone to wonder, uh, are they a thing? But, and even some of the guys were jealous, but Wakugo and Todoroki didn't care because they're edgy like that. On entering the building, Deku felt a bit weird but didn't pay any mind. The space hero, 13, explained to the group that her quirk can easily be used to kill others and so can theirs so they should be mindful and learn to control it after this speech many black holes started appearing around the usj and hundreds of villains came out of them some of the students asked aizawa um i thought you said this was rescue training why are villains here i don't know 13, take the kids and contact UA. I'll try to hold them off. While 13 was trying to evacuate the building, Kurigiri cornered them and with his portals sent the students to different areas of the USJ. 
Froppy, Katsumi, and Deku were sent to the shipwreck zone where they landed in a lake and many aquatic villains rushed them. But Froppy quickly grabbed them with her tongue and went to the deck of a small ship in the middle of the lake. When they landed, Deku got a smirk on his face and asked, Dang, Froppy, what else can that tongue do? Froppy was confused but told Deku to try and come up with a plan because the villains were surrounding the ship. Deku, still focused on Froppy's tongue game, couldn't come up with anything so Katsumi took charge and flew them over to where Aizawa was fighting, this huge bird looking creature with an exposed brain. Aizawa was getting bodied because his scarf was too weak for Nomu's Hercules body. Aizawa was about to receive another hook to the jaw, but Izuku used his tree roots to grab its hand and used his special move Divine Tree to grab the rest of the Nomu's body as well as Shigaraki, Kurigiri and other villains in close proximity. Then he used the most potent jellyfish venom and paralyzed and damaged the villains from the inside out. Shigaraki did receive some venom. Shigaraki did receive some venom but started decaying the tree roots before it could take major effects. He made a escape with Kurigiri to get medical attention as soon as possible. The Nomu broke out of its bindings and went on the offensive, but its movements were slow but still packed a punch. Katsumi used her solar flare to slow down the Nomu even more to provide time for Deku to prepare his special move, Divine Punishment. He used his roots to grab the Nomu, then jumped onto its head and shifted into a pando tree, which is the heaviest organism he has. It's the largest tree at over 6.6 thousand tons heavy, which squished the Nomu's brains in killing it on the spot. He lifted, he then shifted out of it and also collapsed due to the strain on his body from using such a heavy organism. Katsumi ran over thinking the worst had happened, but Deku opened his eyes to a crying Katsumi. He brought her head down for a kiss and said, hey, you think I'll be taken down that easy? Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked, like. If you didn't, dislike. And if you guys have any what if suggestions or want me to change up this what if, leave it in the comment below. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.